woodland. Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, showing rare courage in the face of disaster. In the air. On horseback. Or in a screaming squad car. Ranger Bill, his mind alert, a ready smile, unswerving, loyal to his mission. And all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. Hello, boys and girls. You know, today's adventure couldn't have happened a few years ago. And just goes to show that a forest ranger, like everybody else, has to keep up with the times. You've seen those metal signs along the highway, the signs your forest ranger puts up, no matter what state you live in. Signs that read, Danger, Deer Crossing. They mean that the motorist must be on the lookout for wild deer, to be on guard so as not to hit them if they dash across the road. Well... A sign just like that was a clue to the exciting and hazardous mission that I call Danger Deer Crossing. Comrade Viet? Uh, Comrade, you... Do not say my name. Do not say it even here in this room. You understand? Uh, Comrade, but what shall I call you when I have to speak to you? Call me by my brother title, of course, Comrade. Just that, nothing more. Da, comrade. But what if there are others around? Ach, then call me Jones or Smith or anything that comes into your head. But do not call me by my real name, ever. Understand, Piet? I understand. Good. Now, do not forget. I will not forget, comrade. Very well. To business. We have much to do, far to travel. Do you have the passports? Da, comrade. Money? Da, comrade. Maps? Da, comrade. Heavy shoes? Da, comrade. Compasses? Da, comrade. Shovels? Da, comrade. Nets? Da, comrade. Mm, and plenty lonesome tunes, Stumpy. Yes, here's plenty lonesome country. Yeah, lonesome is right. Lonesome as I ever see. There's uh, some mighty lonesome country in my day, but this beats it all. Yeah, lonesome. Mighty lonesome. Even a coyote get himself lost out here. A he long way from home, not for sure. You can say that again, Grey Wolf. I guess they drug half the forest rangers in the west down here, plus all the deputies they can muster. <laughs> yep. And here we are, guarding a lot of nothing. Yeah, important job, though. Just the same. Oh, sure, but there ain't nothing to see. Well, you're not here to look at scenery. I've seen scenery. Just like we got here, mountains, trees, forests, plains, prairie, desert, all that stuff. No people here, though. That's our job. That's why we're here. Keep people out of here. I know, but there ain't no people here to keep out. <laughs> Plenty of people over by platform. Sure. That's miles away from here. I've seen them, too. Soldiers and scientific fellers and all like that there. i uh, seen it, too. Sure was big. Yes. And Bill over there now. He think maybe today's the day. Well, what they waiting for? Oh, the weather. Weather? What kind of talk is that? We have weather every day. <laughs> yes, but weather got to be just exactly the right kind. Oh. Hey, something's moving over in them there bushes over there. Yeah, sure. I've been watching there a half hour, maybe more. 
You look good and you see a deer. A deer family. Oh, sure, I see them now. <laughs> Can't beat an Indian for eyesight. Them deer, all right. Uh, buck, uh, doe, and two little fawns. <laughs> Ain't they the cutest you ever see? Say, hey, there they go. Taking off. White tails are flying like flags. Uh, Taking off. High tail it straight over towards the direction where that platform is. Yeah, but we're here to watch for people, not animal. Yeah, not but... Not uh, worry, not worry, Stumpy. Deer know how to take care of himself. You stay away from people. Stay away from what people build. Away from noise. Deer be all right. Uh, sure hope so. I'd hate for anything to happen to them dear little deers. Yet? Da, comrade. Speak quietly. It's a very still day and sound carries farther than you might think. Da, comrade. I've been asleep. Have you seen anything? Only the usual. That red Indian, that foolish-looking old Kulak, have walked past here three times, not twenty feet away. <laughs> it's a good dugout, is it not? Mm. Completely concealed, completely camouflaged. We could live down here for a year, see everything, and never be seen. Uh, but a man needs some exercise. Oh, we'll have time enough for that later on. <laughs> da, comrade. Uh, we will be on the alert today, an extra alert. This weather is just right. How will we know when it happens? Oh, we will know all right. Just keep all the sonic measuring apparatus turned on and ready, and wear your protective glasses all the time. Very well, comrade. Uh, one thing, uh, how will we get out of here? Oh, I have thought of that. It'll be easy. We will wait here for several days after it happens. Taking final tests, then just leave at night. Leave all this equipment? Of course. It will have done its work. What they are interested in are the records and reports we bring back. Ah, and when they give orders, we obey. How are things going over to the platform, Bill? Well, the colonel told me to alert all of my crews of deputies. Begins to look as though tomorrow will be the day. Well, how we know? Well, you won't, uh, other than this message I'm giving you right now, Grey Wolf. Be prepared for it any time after dawn tomorrow. Ah, uh, we'll be ready. Keep on the alert, that's all. A small plane will fly overhead, trailing a yellow and black streamer. You'll be able to see it. The streamer is a hundred feet long. Well, what's it say on the streamer, Bill? Uh, eat at Sloppy Joe's Restaurant? <laughs> the streamer is your warning. It means everything is in readiness at the platform. You uh, know just what to do? Yeah, lie down in the trenches. Yep, uh, face down. And put on the protective glasses. And wait for the boom. Right. You're a long way from the platform here, miles and miles, so the noise won't be as loud as you might imagine, but you'll hear it all right. No matter how loud she is, she can't scare me. Good. And remember, don't get out of the trench or look up for ten minutes or so after the noise. Even with your eyes closed and heads down, you'll see the flash. Why we wait so long after it go off? Safety measure. We know luck. This far away, there's no danger of radiation or fallout. The weathermen have made sure of that. Just what I told Grey Wolf here. Weather is one of the main things in this here operation... Just exactly what I explained to Grey Wolf here. Ain't that right, Grey Wolf? <laughs> right. Well, unless the weather changes or something else, uh, tomorrow's the day. And remember the reason you're here is my deputies. Nobody, and that means nobody, is allowed in this area. Mm -hmm, right. Yeah, sure. Very well. I'm going to walk on around and alert all the guards in my section. Come See you me. later. We watch. Never fear. So long. <laughs> Ain't even a jackrabbit going to get past us. So long, Bill. You know what, Grey Wolf? No, what? I'm wondering and wondering where them little deers is tonight. <laughs> I'm wondering and wondering if they're going to be all right. If, if they're too close to that platform, who knows what might happen to them. <laughs> Poor little deers. Sun 
up. Oh, son of <laughs> Poor Henry. He'd give a pretty to be here with us today. <laughs> I know. Too bad. And boy have to be in school. Yep. Yeah, we can tell him all about it, though. Uh, hey, what you digging up that handful of dust for? Old Indian trick. Tell which way the wind blow. Or tell if wind not blow either. You watch. <laughs> when you let that there dust trickle out of your hand, she falls right straight down to the ground. Yep. No wind. Near your breast turn. That means this just a perfect... Hey, 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 take a look. Huh? Hey, take a listen, I mean. Yeah. I mean, take a look and a listen. I mean, there's a signal plane. Well, that's the signal. Won't be long now. Uh, won't be long now. Uh, gray wolf. Uh, yes? Them uh, little deer. They seen the airplane, too. It scared them. They took off. Took off like lightning. Tails up, flags are flying. They took off real, real fast. Looked like they was fixing to run a long ways. But, uh, gray wolf. Uh, yes, Dumpy. They was running right towards where that there platform is at. Yet. Da, comrade. Well, that plane was the signal. You saw the streamer? Uh, it will not be long now. Everything ready? Everything. I did not graduate from the People's University for nothing. Batteries? Da, comrade. Oscillograph, seismograph, odometer, synchronized chronometer? Everything, comrade. Everything. Then we wait. Da, we wait. <laughs> Ah, uh, yes, but not long now, I think. Keep face to ground, Stumpy. If we could just hear that there countdown, we'd know where we was at, in a manner of speaking. And they may count on without us. Don't worry. Uh, we say get on with it, though. <laughs> it's tedious. Puts me in mind of one time when I was just a little shaver, shirt tail boy. Fourth of July it was. We had this here monstrous firecracker and... Uh, well, did you see her? Yes. I mean, it, it was more like we thought we'd seen it. Inside her head, you might say. Not flash, all right. Oh, where's the boom? Uh, the boom comes soon. Uh, we're a long way off, you know. Do like Bill say, we wait. Comrade. Da. Shall we take the readings now? Da, each machine. Seismograph. And it over. Atmospherical breakdown chart. Give it to me. Oscillograph. All the material. Telegraph, a neurophonic resistor, hectometer, Boskunkov computer. Dot, dot, give them all to me. Uh, barograph, a cosmic univator, and this one, and this one, and this one. That is all, comrade. Very well. There. I have all the findings in the lead box. And uh, here is the soldering iron already hot. Seal it up. And that's that. Sealed tight. They should be pleased when they get them. Da, get busy now. Busy? Da, bury all that equipment. We are finished. Yeah. So, we'll abandon it. Bury it all. When you do that, bury the shovel too. And dig quietly. Da, comrade. <laughs> comrade. What now? What do we do now? We wait. We just wait. Uh, 
Hey, you two, you can get up now. Oh, good. I just wanted to be very sure. Oh. Good to be up and moving around again. <laughs> I bet. Hey, everything looks just the same. Oh, sure. Everything work okay and go off all right? Well, as I know, I just finished giving the all clear to all the periphery guards in my section. Talked to the pilot of the warning play and over at the landing strip, and he said that... Hey, what's the matter with Stumpy? He hasn't moved a muscle. There he is, lying in his trench. Yeah, we, we go look. Uh, <laughs> Special deputy sound asleep. Hey, Stumpy! <laughs> wait, wait, hey, what's going on here? Wake up. Oh, Bill. Hi, Gray Wolf. Have a good sleep? <laughs> sleep? What do you mean, sleep? I wasn't sleeping. Just closed my eyes for a second or two oh, oh. and rest him. Oh, I see. Oh, uh, Bill, you say a uh, pilot say... Oh, that, uh, uh, yes. He said that he got a report from the staging grounds uh, right as soon as radio communication was resumed and that the colonel had made it official. The firing was a complete success. Nothing quite like this one has ever been fired before, and that's why it was even more vital than usual to keep the whole matter top secret. Yes, that's right. Take months, I suppose, to analyze and evaluate all the information that was collected today. Not good that some other countries know about this. Mm, definitely and positively not. Everything run off slick as a whistle, huh? Yes, all according to plan, Stumpy. Except for uh, one funny occurrence. Well, what that? Well, the pilot told me about it. He said when he was making his warning flight, he wasn't very high, you know. He saw that family of four deer heading straight for a clump of woods near to the firing oh, area. That's not good. Mm, not if you're a nature lover, it isn't. Goodness knows what could happen to them if they happen to get into the zone of radioactive fallout. As far as was known, no living creature of any size, that is, was in that danger area. Everything that could be driven out was driven out. But that deer family just wouldn't go. Well, maybe they are... Hey, ain't that... Uh, there you're walkity talkity to you buzzing? <laughs> yes, I'll get it, Stumpy. That means we're back on radio communication again. Operation Moonbeam, station 42, guard 42A, this end, over. 42A? Yes. Bill? Uh, yes. Good. I'm glad it is you. Bill, this is Colonel Delamere. Oh, yes, sir. An emergency has arisen, something we didn't foresee, a very serious emergency. And we're going to need your help. Now, you're an animal man. Alert all your guards at once. Tell them that they see any deer, buck, does, or fawns, that they're to shoot on sight. And Bill. Yes, sir? Tell them if they do shoot any deer, not to go near them after they're shot. Also, tell them to report any signs of deer by radio immediately. And you, you get over here to headquarters just as fast as you can. Yes, sir. Over and out. You hear all that? Yes. And I'll warn the outposts. Keep a sharp lookout. But, but, but... Uh... No, but, but, but. You watch, watch, watch. Yeah, but what I can see is why a colonel in the U.S. Army would declare a state of emergency over a deer. Comrade... Did you hear all that jibber-jabber on our radio? Of course. Capitalistic foolishness. Our army men do not waste time with... Uh... Deer? They would with these deer, Piat. You said you used to hunt deer. I was the best in our commune. Every year I was the best. You can ask anyone. I am the best. The very best deer hunter of all. Why, enough, I... enough. Listen, comrade. We are going to on a deer hunt. The most dangerous deer hunt in the history of the world. Those two tiny fawns. You saw them? Do you remember them? Naturally, but... Uh, Could you capture them? Alive? Naturally, but... Uh, Listen, little cabbage. Imagine going back to them with two live deer. Two live deer who have been exposed to what these deer have lived through. Mm. Think, comrades, just think how pleased they will be. The implications here are frankly, well, they're terrible, gentlemen. Indubitably, these deer are violently radioactive. Why they are alive is a mystery, but they are alive. They've been seen by our airplane spotters, seen in the heart of almost impenetrable bush country. Science, truthfully, is not certain of the amount of damage these deer can do. 
whether they can transmit fatal radioactivity to other deer and other animals, whether, and I shudder to think of this, whether an unsuspecting hunter could shoot one of them and in turn be himself and his whole family contaminated, well, we just don't know. But we dare not take any chances. If even the knowledge of this got out, we would have a panic. Gentlemen, those deer must be captured, alive if possible, but captured, and at once. Any questions? Uh, Colonel, if a man does capture them, what then? Notify this headquarters. We're equipped to decontaminate. Good. Now lose no time, and remember speed and secrecy. One last thing. We are fortunate to have here with us today a man who knows animals. I refer to Bill Jefferson here. I have appointed Bill to be in charge of this radioactive deer hunt. Everyone will report to him. Be guided by him. Obey his orders. That is all. You airplane pilots, quarter the area. Stay in the air all the time, day and night. It's full moon now. Fly low, and if you see the deer, get away quickly. Don't scare them. Report your location. Your periphery guards are being reinforced by soldiers. Two soldiers to every guard. Keep your rifles at the ready. On safety, but at the ready. If you see the deer, shoot. Remember, deer are very, very quick. A cornered deer, especially a big buck or a sick deer, and these deer may be sick, a deer can be a dangerous adversary. Even the females can use their sharp hooves as weapons. So exercise caution. Bill, I have idea how to catch deer. Well, all our tries have been unsuccessful. Your ideas are usually pretty good ones, Grey Wolf. What is it? Deer not like noise. Deer run and hide and run and hide, and men never catch deer. Men think like men, and they hunt that way. Mm -hmm. Maybe a good idea. Think like deer. Then maybe we find them. Go on, Grey Wolf. That sounds like sense. Well, you call off all the men. All of them. Use the walkie-talkie. Call all men out of the area, and then the woods quiet down. And get still. Mm -hmm. Deer plenty scared, though. So what we do, we think like deer. All right. Suppose then we're thinking like a deer would think. What then? Well, we go to deepest part of the forest. Thick as woods. Find a glade in the forest. Plenty shade, plenty water. We go there and we rest. We stay there. That's what we do if we are deer. Grey Wolf, you've got it. I'll call off all the men, and then you and I'll go and find those radioactive deer. Very well, comrade deer hunter. What do we do now? We find the deer. That's what we are here for. Nothing to it. But how? Nothing to it. My grandfather told me, and I suppose his grandfather told him... All you have to do is think like a deer. What? Duh, comrade. I've been studying that uh, topogra topographical map our people uh, borrowed last year. It's easy. But uh, when deer are frightened or weary from being chased, they go to the deepest part of the forest and find a place to hide and rest. Well, and there is only one such place in this area, comrade. Not too far from here. I can find it easily. It's nothing for a great deer hunter like myself. But what about all those men who have been crashing through the bushes? Have you no ears, comrade? Have you no eyes? You are a good party man, but not a woodsman. The men have left. All of them, they have gotten discouraged. Americans discourage easily. The area is clear. Come, let us get those deer. <laughs> There, up ahead, Bill. I think deer in that thick patch of woods. I'm amazed. This is the best woodsmanship I've ever seen, Grey Wolf. I picked out that water course and deeply forested spot on the map. And I've been using my compass to get here, but you... Uh, I need no map, uh, no compass. Indian, no woods and waters. I try to think like wild deer think. Look, bare ground here. Mm -hmm. Clay, leave good tracks. Yeah, and there they are. Huh. One, two, three, four sets. Mm, right. Tracks of a big buck, a doe, and two tiny sets of tracks. And headed right straight for that heavy clump of mm -hmm. trees. Hey, 
Hey, yeah. there they are. I heard them. No. But that branch, you heard it crack, didn't you? The buck must have stepped on a dead branch. No. But I heard it. You hear branch break, but deer not do that. Gray wolf. Deer not make clumsy noise like that. No animal make clumsy noise like that. Only one kind of creature do that. And it's wood. A, uh, a man? Yes, Bill. Somebody else hunt for those deer, too. Oh, you clumsy, clumsy ox. You make as much noise as a steam roller. Watch where you put your feet. If you step on another branch, you will have those deer scared away, and we will never get them. Pardon, comrade. Uh, very well. Now, we... Uh, tsch, tsch. What? Shh, shh. On that hillside, the deer. Oh, the uniformed commissar and that red Indian. What do we... We get the deer first. And if we see those two... We should. First. Ah. Ah, but we will not have to. There they go. <laughs> they have turned around. They are leaving. They are going away. They are out of sight. Come along. Let's capture those young deer. There they are. Those men? No, no. The deer, all four of them, lying down, resting by that oak tree. I see. Are you ready? Is your rifle prepared? Da. I'll take the big buck. You take the doe. And then we can capture the two fawns alive. Then I count three. One, two... Put up those rifles! The forest ranger. Let's get him! No, you don't! No. Hey. Watch out, Conrad! Look out, Grey Wolf! Hello! <laughs> And so, Bill, that was the end of the story. Not quite the end, after your report got to Washington, that is. As a result of that report, I am happy to say I have been sent here with a special letter of thanks to Grey Wolf from the Secretary of the Interior. Uh, I not do anything. Uh, What happened to the deer? Well, as you know, they were just too exhausted to run anymore, and even all that rumpus you and Bill caused when you overpowered those two spies, even that didn't budge them. After you told us where they were, our men easily captured them in nets. They're alive and well. Isolated, of course, and under observation. And are they radioactive, Colonel? Classified information, Bill. I see. Well, we had a couple of tense moments, especially with those spies, but it looks as though all has worked out all right. Well, those two spies won't spy anymore. (laughs) What you chuckle at, Stumpy? I was just remembering what those deer were talking about when we found them. Talking? Oh, looks like we're in for one of the old-timers' gags. (laughs) Prepare yourself, Colonel. Well, what word are you talking about, Stumpy? (laughs) Well, I didn't catch much, but I did hear the fawn say to the doe, Think it'll rain, dear? We'll see you next week for more adventure with... Ranger!